Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, I've talked about this a lot, the need for different genres in comics. And typically when I talk about it, it's not for creative reasons or artistic reasons, it's for business reasons. It's simply looking at the, the fact of you see other growing markets and you see the ability to kind of penetrate and hit other genres besides just say superhero. And it's a, you know, it's a business benefit. It helps the corporation make money. There are certainly artistic reasons to do it. I think there are practical reasons to do it. You know, most notably, some creators are going to be better at telling a specific story than being shoehorned and telling a different story. I think you see a lot of that right now where we see creators both on the writing and the art side who are, you know, pushed into doing superhero books because they're friends with editors or they're trying to put a foot in the industry or who knows what. But their heart and talent lies in slice of life or web comics or things that are kind of more along those lines. Uh, it, it's clear if you, um, and if you just read it up from say Kelly Thompson, that, you know, her heart is really with Jeff, the land shark. And if she could just write a multi, you know, a 300,000 copy best-selling comic, Jeff, the land shark and do nothing but that she'd probably be much happier than, you know, doing, uh, she, you know, what, whatever she's doing in any given company, that that's where her heart sits. Now, the problem is that that product doesn't sell that well. There's so I guess there are some cock around uh, New York City Comic Con that Jeff the Landshark was a massive hit. Uh, but this feels, uh, it, unfortunately, this feels and smells a lot like when people were saying uh, Miss Marvel was a massive digital hit. And when you dug into it, it's like Miss Marvel sold more digital copies than other titles coming out the same month. So in other words, Miss Marvel did better in digital than, say, Avengers did. Avengers maybe have 10% of the, you know, of the total volume is being sold through digital. With Miss Marvel, you have 20%. So now, by the way, that's not a, like, a, ah, he cares about that fact. It's actually an important fact. And if you're trying to put out a digital strategy and figure out what you need to do there, seeing what works and what doesn't is pretty important. But it would be a misnomer to say, for example, you know, Miss Marvel is a bigger hit than Avengers, when say Avengers is selling eighty thousand copies, Miss Marvel is selling fifty thousand, but Miss Marvel is doing better in digital. The accurate headline is Miss Marvel does better in a digital spot. What should we do with that? Versus Miss Marvel is beating Avengers, which is a highly you know incorrect thing to say. Lots of articles were saying exactly that some time ago. Uh, but anyway, uh, this mail hits on it as well. It says, uh, "Hey Perch, how's it going?" I was checking out the new She-Hulk comic. It wasn't really my thing, as it's pretty much just slice of life. I wouldn't, by the way, for, for the point of clarity, a lot of people point to the John Byrne She-Hulk as being a much better comic, and that's fine. I liked it better, too. But it's worth noting that the John Byrne She-Hulk was not exactly superhero action. It was more humor. You could really kind of squint, and maybe you could call it slice of life humor. She still fought things and still had adventures and things, but it, the tone was certainly comedic as opposed to traditional superhero. So it's, it's, it's fair being fair. You know, I think I've, I've seen some people recently like, I like the old superhero John Byrne, she Hulk book versus this new, uh, you know, more silly rainbow row, she Hulk book. And okay. In terms of the quality of the content. Sure. I agree with you, but the style is, is not as that. That's a bit of a misleading statement on the styles. All those are being accurate. Anyway, back to the myth. It says, I wouldn't think a slice of life superhero comic for Marvel and DC would do well sales wise as an ongoing, especially considering how expensive comics are now. It feels like it would make more sense to be a digital only comic on Marvel Unlimited, leaning into that webtoon format. I guess my question is can a slice of life comic from DC and Marvel be a successful ongoing series? Love to your thoughts on this. Have a great day. You have a great day too. Um, look, you're absolutely right. The, the, the the platform for slice of life, where the you know you go where the people are. I mean, I, I, that's an old kind of commercial marketing sales statement. You go where your audience is. You go where your customers are. You go where the people are. You know, if if you want to, you know, if if you want to sell football gear, you need to go to a city where, you know, football is popular. If you're going to put down a store, it makes a hell of a lot more sense to put it down somewhere in the vicinity of, you know, what, what is it? What is a stadium here? And hey, where do the Cowboys play? MetLife Field? I, I don't know. You put, the, you, put your, you put your merchandise store there as opposed to, say, next to the Arboretum 
There's just, you know, you go where your customers are. And in comics, there's definitely, definitely a huge audience for Slice of Life. But where that audience is, is not at a Wednesday local comic book shop. They're not Wednesday warriors. They are, they're looking at Webtoon. They're looking at tapas, such as they are. That's where they go. Uh, they do not go into a comic shop. The idea of saying, well, let's bring this huge Webtoon ar- you know, audience into a comic shop is flawed. It would be hard to do if Marvel and DC owned the comic shops themselves, but they don't. In this case, Marvel and DC are publishers producing material to a distributor who's going to send it to a retailer. That retailer, they have zero control over. So who knows what's going on in that comic shop, but if the publisher decides to make a big pivot to bring an audience there, you better, you know, sure as hell make sure the retailers are on board with that idea. Otherwise, they're going to continue to appeal to the audience they have. They're not going to market to the slice of life webtoon audience, and you're just going to be putting product there they can't sell, and very, very quickly, they will stop ordering it. It's it's not that complicated. Um, the The... Business misnomer here is that there is no audience for Slice of Life. Again, there absolutely is. You go to Webtoon, you see a, a absolute ton of content there that is read, that is active, that has people who you know daily go to do it. It's just if you're thinking about a Venn diagram, right? You know what a Venn diagram is, little two circles where they converge. The Slice of Life Webtoon audience and the superhero people going into their local comic shop barely connect. The, the overlap is tiny. So therefore, if you're Marvel at DC, a publisher that is known superhero books, you're going to have to sell superhero books. Just, just full stop. That simple. If you decide to go to uh, to you know slice of life, you your you, your obstacles are basically first of all your your company itself. People know you as superhero. So you could do kind of what DC did. You could partner with some other people to make content that's slice of life in nature. The Bruce Wayne family adventures. They're they're silly. They fit that Webtoon audience. They look like Webtoon material. And DC almost hides a little bit. Obviously, you've got Batman. Everybody knows that's a DC property. But they kind of suppress a lot of their brand because it's not as valuable to them in the webtoon market as it is in the local comic shop market. So you got to just change. But, you know, Marvel is attempting to do the same thing with Marvel Infinity and, as I mentioned before, Jeff the Landshark and some of these books. The the challenge with Marvel and Marvel Infinity is the people who are going to be buying the Marvel Infinity app or, you know, downloading it or getting content there, the people are going to be subscribers. The Venn diagram of Slice of Life audience is going to be tiny, extremely tiny. Because the people who are buying into that app are wanting to buy digital access to Marvel's, you know, month in, month out books, which, whatever Marvel feels about at the time, are intended to be superhero books. That's what the audience wants. That's what they expect. Now, th- again, this doesn't mean that you can't grow. I said at the very beginning, we need more genres. We need people exploring other things. But number one, you got to go where your audience is. And number two, y- you can't, you can't, you know, weirdly mash them up. So, for example, if you're Marvel and you want to get the romance sector going again, first of all, you're going to have to figure out a place to sell that. People who are interested in a romance-style comic book, it's unlikely there's going to be a huge audience that's going to go to the local comic shop to do that. You're trying to hit different people, so you got to find a place to sell it. Second, um, it, it does you, you know, very, very little benefit to try and transform a current comic to, say, take uh, Deadpool and turn it into a romance book. The people who are interested in the romance genre are not going to be interested in Deadpool, no matter what you do. They're not going to creatively go, hey, I, I thought I knew what this character was, but I'm willing to give something completely different a try for, for laughs. And number two, um, you know, the on the other end, the people who like Deadpool read Deadpool are going to be like, I know what Deadpool I like. You know, romance genre Deadpool is is not it. So I will sit this one out. That's, in effect, where it goes. I I don't believe that Marvel and DC, in their current construct, can do much with Slice of Life. She-Hulk is going to try. I mean, at least the very, you know, at least this. Rainbow Rowell, as a writer, is a YA, you know, drama, Slice of Life writer. That is what she does. So, you know, thank goodness Marvel is not, you know, saying, hey, let's uh, have you write the Hulk and have it be a horror book. You know, at least they're smart enough to go, we have a writer that has a certain style. 
and let's match that style up with what we want to sell. That part's fine. The idea of, you know, taking a superhero book like She-Hulk where, you know, a couple of years ago we have her in the Avengers and we're doing a, you know, PTSD type thing. And now we're going to do kind of silly Billy slice of life stuff like that. That that just confuses readers. It's just bad strategy. Um, but, you know, even if you could get past that, you know, for example, I think you could make a go of it in a romance book with a Mary Jane book. Um, was it Mary Jane Loves Spider-Man was a book. Very cute. It worked. Still had the problem, though, the, the last and the final, the biggest problem is where are you going to go sell it? You've got to sell it someplace where, you know, people are. It's, it'd be like Dogman, okay? You think about Dab Pilkey selling Dogman, Raina Telgmeier, and you say, all right, you're doing graphic novels. You're, you're you know, you one's, a, you know, one's a animated kind of, in some cases, crudely drawn dog, it's cop. The other one is, uh, you know, slice of life drama graphic novel. And when you make these, we're going to go sell them in the local comic shop. Well, guess what? If they had only gone to the local comic shop, neither of those two creators would be known today. They would not have been successful at all. The reason it worked is Dav Pilkey's dog man went to Target and it was placed in the toy aisle and it was placed near the register. And so when kids are like, hey, I want, you know, I, I buy me something. That book was right there. That worked. If you tried to sell Dogman in a bar, it would not work. If you try and sell it in the local comic shop, it would not work. If you try and sell it at a car dealership, it would not work. It needs to be sold where, where the audience is. So same thing with Ray, Raina Telmeyer. You know, it was in the big box stores too, but she got a lot of her boost from Scholastic, specifically, you know, book fairs where, you know, grades three to six are looking for something to get. And that is a absolutely perfect audience. Obviously, Dogman did that too, but but those are the locations where you get that audience. And it works. And so you just you that that is the trick. If if you're gonna be Marvel and you're gonna try and put out a floppy comic book that's gonna be a slice of life type book, maybe entertaining for the editors who are like, finally, something I like, sitting up there with all the other floppies, but you're destined for failure. Comics, as I said, do need to diversify, but it's not just pumping out new ideas, you know, new concepts. It's got to go along with new places to sell them. And if you don't do that other part as well, I, you know, you, you're just wasting your time. Anyway, um, <laughs> I a lot of things are taken very literally. By the way, I, I said before, you know, you need more genres, and people are like, oh, so you think you should? Is, you think we should change Superman into a? you know, LGBTQ romance book. Like, that that's not what I said at all. I said, like, listen, dummy, if you look at manga, you will notice that there are a lot of genres of all types in manga that are sold. But you will also notice that they do not take one piece and say, hey, you know what? We're going to turn this into a, a decompressed, gritty, you know, dark horror I type book like the closest it's going to get is a silly you know arc with thriller bark. You're not going to see One Piece suddenly morph and become Alice in Borderland or Berserk. That that would be insane. One Piece is One Piece. It's popular. It, the genre knows what it is and it's successful. You start screwing around with all those things, it, things go bad in a hurry. And so why why that is a uh, mystery to people is beyond me I, and forever will be. But anyway. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe. Thanks for listening.